We're very happy to hear from the Reverend Mavis Stevenson. Thank you for your patience, dear ones. Thank you so much. Good morning. And good morning to all you wonderful people in Zoom land. I know you have new people with you today. It is my joy to be with you and to, I'm grateful for this technology that makes it all possible. I've come to talk about truth, the great emancipator, the divine emancipator. When we ask ourselves what is truth, unless we have a realization, a deep realization of truth, it is difficult for us to explain it to someone. Perhaps we read about it in books or we get it in lectures, but we are left hungry for a deeper experience. Truth is not a product of the intellect. It abides in its fullness at the core of our being as the unchanging reality, that which was that which is right now and that which will ever be. It is the criterion upon which every thought, every feeling, every action is measured. It is only at the plane of the divine, within divine mind, that we can know truth in the absolute sense. When we speak of truth in the intellectual sense, when we speak of truth, uh, relative truth, it's like the information you have in this moment. For instance, years ago, growing up, I was told that when your brain cells die, they do not regenerate. But today, Neuroscientist Sandrine Thoret of the University of London and others too, they're telling us that neurogenesis is indeed possible. So that's a, a, we were operating in relative truth. But the truth that is absolute, that truth is what accords with God as principle, and you know principle is unchanging. That is the truth, that is the divine emancipator. That which frees us from bondage, frees us from oppression or from restraint of any kind and every kind. I like the way Richard Lynch in Know Thyself puts it. He says, Truth is the vision we perceive through soul insight. It is the ultimate, infinite power pervading all existence. It is the hidden harmony of life, the single thread of meaning that runs through and connects all things, the unchangeable principle that controls the universe. Isn't that uh, mixed meditation? Mm -hmm. Yes, that was it. I draw your attention to an event in the holiest week on the Christian calendar, the trial of a man who lived an exemplary life of truth and expression, Jesus the Christ. He was brought before the Roman governor Pontius Pilate who asked Jesus if he was the king of the Jews. Jesus answered him saying, you say that I am, but to this end I was born and for this cause came I into the world that I should bear witness unto the truth. Everyone that is of the truth hears my voice. Now immediately Pilate asks, the, I, I call it and others call it the immortal question. You might call it the academic question. What is truth? The same question, this same question echoes in the hearts and minds of every soul who is 
hungry for God, who would know God and the deep things of God. But instead of waiting for the answer directly from the Christ, what Pilate did was he walks out of a courtroom distracted because there was so much happening on the outside. Friends, so many hearts are crying out in hunger for the truth. But like Pilate, it escapes us because we are not willing to wait for the answer. What is truth? The answer comes when we turn within ourselves to the Christ of our being and wait in the silence of our souls and listen for the word of truth that springs from the Christ within. We have to be open and receptive, letting go of the outer distractions and listen for God. For God always speaks to the human soul. This is the word that builds in us a spiritual consciousness like that of Jesus. Friends, let me ask you this morning, are you asking that question today, what is true? Everyone who knows and believes that the Father abides within him and makes the effort to know him will be guided into a greater and greater awareness of the truth that makes us free. In the Gospel of John, chapter 8, verses, well, verse 32, Jesus promises that you shall know the truth, and the truth will make you free. Mm. The truth that emancipates. There's a song by Daniel Namath. Is that how you pronounce his name? Mm -hmm. That is well, well known to your community. And it is germane to my conversation this morning. I'm raising the veil between me and my God. No separation, no distance at all. God is right here in my heart. I'm raising the veil. I want to know you, oh God. I'm raising the veil. I want to see you, oh God. I'm raising the veil. I want to hear you, oh God. I'm raising the veil. I want to feel you, oh God. I'm raising the veil. I want to praise you, oh God. I'm raising the veil. I want to love you, oh God. I'm raising the veil. There is no mistaking the depth of feeling, the hunger for God in those lyrics. Raise the veil, my friends. Raise the veil and find God within you. In this congregation and in every walk of life, many of our brothers and sisters have found God within. The Quran says that we are closer to him than the jugular vein. The Victorian poet Tennyson puts it this way, closer is he than breathing and nearer than hands and feet. The Old Testament Hebrew scriptures tell us in Ezekiel, God said, I will put my spirit within you. So do not be afraid. Our own beloved Jesus says, the kingdom of heaven is within you. I say to you this morning, reason with yourself. If God fills all time and space, 
and in him I live and move and have my being. Where else would I find him? The same mind that is in Jesus is the same mind that is in you. And he tells us, you shall know the truth and the truth shall make you free. Newton Dillaway in the Gospel of Emerson puts it this way. We follow Jesus the Christ in his word when we live a life of discovery and performance. Listen for and hear the word of truth. And having heard it, friends, go forth to put it into practice. Discovery and performance. What is interesting about the word of truth received in the silence is that it is not exclusively yours. The moment you speak about it or put it into action, the world is poised to receive it. The truth will resonate in the souls of those who are waiting and hungry for it. Because you see, the character of truth is, it is universal. There is a resonance in the soul of, of the one who is ready for it. When you hear the word of truth in the silence, you become like Jesus, a bearer of the light and a witness in your performance. You become a witness to the truth and know that by your action, you kindle the light in another. The Christ in you blesses and uplifts the Christ in another. It is not just about you. I want you to know that. It's, truth is not just about you or your family. Truth is about your community and it ripples beyond you to your world. It is about your work in the world. Let me share something from Charles Fillmore, co-founder of Unity. The true prophet of God, he says, and the prophet, my friends, is one who receives divine inspiration and understands the working of the law and who speaks out for God. The prophet does not have to write his words down. He may speak them in the ethers and through their own inherent power of perpetuation and growth. They will find their way into the minds of men to uplift and to heal. Jesus never wrote a word except in the sand. Yet his words are treasured as the most precious that we have. The word of truth has life in it. It has power to restore and to make whole, and it cannot perish or grow less with changes that come with the fleeting years. Therefore, my friends, as you look out on the world today, right now, and find yourself praying for the situations and circumstances you are seeing, Know as a bearer of the light and as a witness to the truth, the answer is not in the problem. It is not in the appearance. It is in the truth that you know. Raise the veil between you and your God. Draw close to him and he will draw close to you. It is in his truth, it, it, it is his truth that is the game changer. And you have a consciousness through which he acts to bless you, to bless your family, your community, your government, and your world. The freeing truth is that the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof, the world, and they that dwell therein. The way God works, and I need for you to hear me this morning, 
the way God works is through individual consciousness. Your consciousness, my consciousness, his consciousness, her consciousness. So make yourself available for the emancipation of the world. The COVID contagion has much to teach us today. It begins with one, it doubles to two, to four, to eight, and on and on it goes to where you see we are right now. Truth can be just that contagious when you let God move in your consciousness. Joel Goldsmith says, in opening your consciousness to the activity of the Christ and by not restricting it or attempting to direct it how you want, you permit it to escape into human consciousness and bring God's grace to those persons who open themselves to that grace. You become an instrument through which the activity of the Christ can reach others in the world. When the awareness of the presence of God has been attained, the harmonies of God's grace flow like a river. So where do we go from here? Question. How dedicated are you to finding the Christ within and coming into a oneness of spirit with his spirit? How motivated are you to awakening the world? And how committed are you to the work? It takes diligence and perseverance. It's not easy. It takes diligence and perseverance. Perhaps it will help though for you to remember this truth. It is not I who lives, but Christ who lives as me. Let us raise the veil daily, my friends, and let God be God in us. Amen. Thank you, Mavis. You're welcome. Oh. Oh. Okay.